From creating an entire Western universe that spans American history to a story as eye-opening as the vast Montana skyline, Taylor Sheridan reacts to Yellowstone ending. Yellowstone has been one of television's biggest hits since it debuted on June 20, 2018, leaving fans and critics constantly wanting more and fully invested in the struggles of the Dutton family ranch. Now into the fifth season, the series has already inspired and produced several spin-offs, including 1883, a 10-episode prequel that aired in December 2021 and ended in February 2022, 1923, a sequel to 1883 that is scheduled to run for 16 episodes, Lawman Bass Reeves, another spin-off series to 1883 focusing on the life of Bass Reeves, the first black U.S. Marshal, 1944, a Yellowstone prequel and sequel to 1923, 6666, set in the present day on the Four Sixes Ranch in Texas and will premiere on Paramount Network in 2023. And finally, there's a yet-to-be named Yellowstone sequel planned after the original series ends at the end of season five, with Matthew McConaughey attached to play a starring role. Sheridan has created an entire Western universe that spans American history in a very short time. So with the seemingly endless amount of stories to be told across the landscape, why is the original series ending after just five seasons? There has been much speculation as to why, but Taylor has been clear about the how, telling Deadline in 2021 that he's had the ending of the show mapped out since season four. Well, I know how it ends. I'm writing to that ending. It will go as many years as it takes for me to tell the story, but you're not going to see nine seasons of it. No way. That's a good thing, since it's rare for a series to keep its momentum much past five seasons. And with all the successful spin-offs, there's simply no need to try. But when he made those comments, it was thought the show would end after a sixth season. But now we know that the main story will be wrapped up after just five. And though the why isn't 100% clear, there is enough evidence for us to make some pretty reasonable assumptions. There are two main points of interest. The first is money. Ah, uh, yes, that's a no-brainer, right? Any hugely successful series that survives long enough to see a fifth season almost always has huge production costs, and Yellowstone is no different. But the source of some of those costs may surprise you. It's been speculated that Sheridan's spending has been over the top, and that it's the main reason for the show's end. It's been reported that Paramount and its hundreds of executives are very concerned about his huge expenses for the show and its prequels, with a single episode of 1923 costing up to $22 million per episode to produce. Networks understand the immense costs of producing a top-notch TV series, but some of his expenses can't be simply written off as the cost of doing business. The Wall Street Journal has reported that Sheridan is not only paid to write, direct, and produce the show, he's also paid tens of thousands of dollars per week for his companies and services. These include the following, a cowboy camp that's used to train the actors for their roles. He rents his own cattle to Paramount at a cost of $25 each. He charges the network up to $50,000 per week to film on the ranch that he already owns, and build the studio $3,000 to pay a Texas Wrangler, who was 16 miles away, to look after his horses instead of using someone local. Yeah, I think the only person who thinks those are reasonable expenses is Sheridan himself, and executives have rightfully taken notice. But it puts them in a tough spot, since even with the reckless spending, the show is one of most profitable franchises on Paramount+, Plus, and it's largely because of the realistic and beautiful locations, including Sheridan's own ranch. He writes what he knows, since he grew up on a ranch. He knows how to capture the beauty and allure of the landscapes, using the camera as a paintbrush to bring the wide open spaces of Montana into people's living rooms. And he wouldn't have it any other way, saying, I don't limit myself. I'm drawn to the sparseness of the West because that's where I've spent most of my life. I lived in New York for a while. I enjoyed my time there, but I would be an outsider writing about it. I like being outdoors. It's very obvious from the show's cinematography that he's taken in and is still fascinated by it after all these years. Just like show star Kevin Costner, who lives in Montana, close to Yellowstone Park. He hosted a four-part documentary series in 2022 called Yellowstone 150, celebrating the 150th anniversary of the park. It's obvious that the network executives have been willing to look the other way in regard to some of the extra costs in order to produce such a magnetic on-screen atmosphere. But there comes a point 
where enough is enough. Taking a 2023 first quarter loss of $1.1 billion made Paramount take a closer look at what is actually going on, and that fueled the second theory as to why the show is ending. In fighting on the set, where there's smoke, there's fire. And there have been both, according to sources, close to the situation, claiming there's a lot of tension between Sheridan and Kevin Costner. And when Costner asked about the show's future, Sheridan told him to stick to acting. Insulting the show's top build star isn't a good play, even if you're Taylor Sheridan. But it runs even deeper than that, according to the source, who says that Sheridan has developed a god complex. Well, to be fair, they said certain people in charge of the production developed a god complex. So it isn't necessarily necessarily Sheridan that they're talking about, but I think it's pretty clear. Sheridan clearly feels like he can do anything he wants, and so far it seems like that has been the case. But if the source is to be believed, he's reaching his limit. Talking down to the show's star, especially someone as respected as Kevin Costner, isn't going to project a long-term future for a show. I'd suggest that once a showrunner hits God Complex status, the situation is broken beyond repair, and the clock is ticking. Costner hasn't commented on his relationship with with Sheridan, of course, but with a direct spin-off in the works, and Costner being replaced by Matthew McConaughey as the show's star, we can assume what's not being said here. Adding to that, the show's delayed filming and production have been blamed on conflicts with Costner's schedule, an accusation that his lawyer, Marty Singer, has called ridiculous. Kevin has made requests to reduce his number of days on set, saying he would only be available to shoot for 50 days, not the 65 days he originally agreed to, and then allegedly suggested that he could only spend a week shooting the second half of season five which caused delays. Even with a legitimately tight schedule, and by all accounts, it is, it seems odd that he would be trying to make it as difficult as possible to wrap filming if they were one big happy family on set. But maybe now that things have fallen apart and McConaughey is set to take over the story moving forward, he's decided to prioritize his other projects at the expense of Yellowstone. I wouldn't blame him for that. He's just looking out for number one, something that Sheridan has been doing from the start on multiple shows. No matter how Yellowstone ends, there will likely be a bitter taste in the mouths of fans after the delays, as well as the drama behind the massive letdown of being stood up at Paley Fest. It's one of the premier television fan events in the country, where fans were excited to attend and hang out with some of their favorite Yellowstone cast members. People drove to Los Angeles from all over the country, with some even flying in from around the world, only to have every listed cast and crew member be a no-show for the event, including Costner and Sheridan. It was only announced to fans moments beforehand that the cast weren't there. That's not how anyone wants the show to be remembered. So hopefully, Taylor and Costner can get along just long enough to finish the final episodes, and the rest of Sheridan's story is as eye-opening as the vast Montana skyline. So from a story as eye-opening as the vast Montana skyline to creating an entire Western universe that spans American history, Taylor Sheridan reacts to Yellowstone ending. 